We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen. Alleluia. Please do be seated. It's lovely to see so many of you here this morning. Uh, on this beautiful, beautiful morning on the fourth Sunday of Easter. Uh, for those who may not have worshipped with us for a little while, if I could just remind you of some of the, uh, just some of the changes to the service. Our service today is being live streamed, but unless you turn around and face the camera, people can only see the back of your head, so don't worry about that. Um, but um, when we come to receiving communion, communion will be distributed from here, from the centre of the aisle. If you can come forward and please hold your hands as far in front of you as you can, I'll do likewise to maintain the distancing. No words of administration will be used. I'll use those words beforehand, so you're asked not to respond, please. Uh, for those who are reading and intercessing, it is permissible to remove your mask while you do so. I think that's all the housekeeping bits. Oh, no, it's not. At the end of the service, please do remain in your queue until you're asked to leave by uh, a steward, because we will be having a, a sort of one-way system, so we're not walking too close to each other. And so as we prepare for our worship this morning, we join together in the words of the prayer of preparation as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we're afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. He'll strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. So if you're able, I invite you to stand as we will say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, the special prayer for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated for our readings. The first reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. <clears throat> the next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power 
or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And this we know, that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. If you're able, would you please stand for our gospel reading? Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this spot. I must bring them in also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. Christ. And so, may I speak in the name of the living God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. I wonder when you hear those words about Jesus being the Good Shepherd, what kind of image comes to your mind? Several years ago, before I was ordained and I was a reader, I was uh, in a church where we had screens. We could have, we often used pictures to uh, illustrate what we were talking about in the sermons. And I remember going on to uh, Google, other search engines are available, to look at their images and see what came up for the Good Shepherd. And as I recall, most of the ones that came up were fairly similar. 
painting after painting, many of them in soft focus. Jesus in clean, smart, long robes, neatly trimmed beard, standing in the middle of a beautiful field or by some rocks or in a valley by a stream. Many of the scenes actually look more like the English countryside than, uh, than Palestine. In some of these, he had a shook, uh, shepherd's crook in his hand, a little lamb in the other one, being watched by adoring and loving sheep, perhaps a slightly, you know, um, loving smile on his face. This is what I might think of as a Sunday school image of Jesus. And this story that we heard from John's Gospel of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is perhaps the most influential Gospel story of them all in creating that image. I've spoken many times about being realistic about our faith and realistic about how we read the Bible. And in that film I suggest this isn't a correct image of the Good Shepherd. This isn't a soft focus story. It's not a story of peace and calm. The truth is that the setting for this Gospel reading is far from sentimental. It's set in the context of confrontation with authority. Perhaps it's better depicted like this. It's not on a quiet hillside, all peaceful and calm. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, the religious leaders who are always seeking to catch him out. And he speaks of wolves coming, snatching the sheep away and devouring them. He speaks of cowardly hired hands who run away to save themselves, looking after their own interests. He speaks of the shepherds being prepared to die a violent and bloody death being attacked and killed by wolves in order to save the sheep. So despite the images that I mentioned earlier, this is not a calm, peaceful, gentle saying that Jesus is the Good Shepherd, that we can romanticise in somehow. It's a harsh and violent image of confrontation, an image with a radical claim attached to it, an image of death and destruction, an image of extolling courage over cowardice. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is actually a very disturbing metaphor. Yet, in the midst of all this, at the very heart of it, is a love story. It's about a caring, loving relationship that exists between the Good Shepherd, Jesus, and his sheep, his flock, us. Between Jesus and you. A shepherd who loves his flock enough to die for them, and a flock which has spent so much time in his presence, walked so closely with him, that the sheep immediately and intuitively know his voice. And they trust him enough to obey him implicitly and do exactly what he says. But of course this isn't an individual metaphor. Jesus isn't talking about a sheep or an individual sheep, he's talking about the collective, the sheep, the flock. The message is corporate. It speaks to us of what it means for us as a church to be the church that God calls us to be. By his words, Jesus defines Christian community, the church, this church, all churches, not in terms of our individual beliefs or how we do things or how we worship together. Jesus defines the Christian community as those who know the voice of God, who know the voice of Jesus and who follow him. Stay close to him, live in relationship with him, and obey his will. And the closer we walk with Jesus, then the more we're drawn into community, which I think is a lovely image, walking with God, being part of a community. But as we reflect on this notion of community, the idea of being one flock, we find the great challenge in this passage. Because the truth is, we might be quite comfortable with this flock here, the flock that we know and love just as we are, because we may know how things work, we may know each other fairly well, know each other's good points and the not so good points. For good or bad, we may know the people around us and know our place within this group. But in this passage, Jesus says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this flock. I must bring them in also and they will listen to my voice. So Jesus wants to bring other people in. Sounds good. It'd be wonderful to have more people with us here, of course. But in reality, that will bring change, challenges of its own. When the new come in, each of us has to move over a little bit, literally and metaphorically, to make a bit more room for the other people and to welcome them. And that's not always easy. This is a really good time for us to be thinking about this reading 
and to think about these things and about how much Jesus loves us. Because we're still in Easter, the season of new life, new hope, looking forward. We're starting to move out of lockdown. Again, we look to the future with renewed hope. Today I'm going to be calling the bands of marriage for James and for Harriet. First one in this group this year. So we prepare for our first wedding in this group this year. There'll be several of those that have been postponed. They will be happening this year and the couples will be looking forward to the future, to a new future. And in all these things, Jesus assures us he is with us and he loves us. I spoke earlier and I've spoken several times recently, as I said, about being real in our faith. And I've preached some quite challenging, quite complicated sermons, but not today. Today is a simple message and the reality is simple and it is this. We are so greatly loved by Jesus, the Good Shepherd, that he was prepared to lay down his life for us. That's it. You are so greatly loved by Jesus, the Good Shepherd, that he was prepared to lay down his life for you. Amen. And so, I invite you to stand if you're able as we affirm our faith in the words of the Lord. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and seen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was inspired from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was a slave For our sake he was crucified and accomplished by us. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So I now invite you to sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. session on the fourth Sunday of Easter. Glorious and loving God, we give thanks that you sent your son Jesus, the Good Shepherd, that he knows each one of us by name, and we are loved for everything that makes us who we are. Knowing this fills our hearts with thanksgiving and joy. Move among us in our congregation and communities, and lead us to care for one another, just as he cares for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we pray for all world, world leaders that use in Jesus Christ the Good Shepherd as the ultimate model of leadership. They would lead and care for their own flocks in such a way that peace might abound, righteousness flourish, and injustice to be eradicated. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of compassion, we pray for our troubled world, for countries with areas of deepening conflict, for those fleeing for their lives or through frailty must remain in war zones, those struggling with drought or lack of clean fresh water. We pray too for the people of India struggling to cope with the increasing demands of COVID, 
lack of adequate health care and supply of oxygen. May all charity and relief workers, peacemakers, medical and rescue staff know of your love and protection and show us ways where we can help bring about an urgent action where the need is greatest. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father God, help us to reach out to strangers in our midst as we remember the way the early church lived in one heart and mind and shared everything that they may that they that they had may we too in this church be always mindful of the needs of others less fortunate and always welcome the newcomer joyfully into our midst. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Loving God, we pray for those who do not know your peace and for those who are struggling with their lives. We ask for your healing on those who are sick, your strength for those who are tired, and your love for those who live with despair and fear. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for those who now walk in the valley of the shadow of death. We know from the psalm that you are with them and have gone before them to prepare them a table overflowing with all good things. Guide those who are left behind in the paths of righteousness and uphold them in their sorrow with the assurance of your goodness and love. We especially pray for the Queen and the Royal Family in their loss of Prince Philip. In a moment of quiet, we bring to God anyone known to us who is in particular need of healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Everlasting God, we ask you that you would bless us here at St Andrews with vision for the future and reverence for the past. Guide us each day as we minister to one another and to the world. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and to do your bidding, always mindful of your amazing love for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Hallelujah.
Creator of all, you wash away our sins, you give us new birth by the Spirit, and redeem us in the blood of Christ. As we celebrate the resurrection, renew your gift of life within us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outboard, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me when supper was ended he took the cup of wine again he praised you gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Andrew, St John the Baptist and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. <coughs> Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We pray together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hearts were unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ was broken for all. Amen. The blood of Christ was shed for all. Amen.
So let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and to rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you brought let us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of victory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, hopefully you've all got a notice sheet. If not, um, please have a look online. Um, the, all the up and coming services are in there. Uh, there is also a little bit I've written. We are after more people to join our PCCs across the group. We have some specific roles and some general church council members. As I say to people often, um, this is your church and uh, it's the people that run the church council. So please, if you're not on a PCC and think you may be able to, have a word with me or one of your church wardens at whichever church you worship in. Yep. And so, I publish the bands of marriage between James Angus Guest and Harriet Avalon Jessup, both of great help with a qualifying connection to this church. Um, if anyone knows of any just cause or impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. This is for the first time of asking. And so let us pray. Lord of life, the source of true love, we pray for James and Harriet. As they prepare for their wedding, be with them in all their preparations. Give them your love in their hearts as they enter into the oneness of marriage. May they be strengthened and guided by you throughout their married life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so I invite you to stand as we prepare to receive God. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.